Good morning everybody and welcome to our worship. Well, I am not in the Everglades in Florida. I am not in some foreign exotic location. I'm in Motherwell, so if you're watching this and you thought of Motherwell as being some industrial suburb of Glasgow, how wrong are you? That is not the case at all. I think it was voted as one of the top five places in the UK for a staycation this year by one of our national newspapers. But welcome to the DL Estate in Motherwell and welcome to our worship. Come with me and pray. Lord of the Nations, we pray for your world. We pray especially for the situations in Myanmar where there is civil unrest, in Minnesota where there is racial tension, and in India where hospitals are turning away COVID patients. We ask that peace might be restored, that justice might prevail, and that healing and aid might come quickly. We pray too for the preparations being made for the summit on climate change in Glasgow, and that it will make a difference and how we care for our planet. Risen Lord Jesus, help us to reflect your love and mercy. We pray for your church in Scotland and that you might help us to reflect on what you are calling us to do and be. Help us to repent of where we have failed and may you renew us and restore us. Help us to rebuild your church and may you revive that church. Risen Lord Jesus, help us to reflect your love and mercy. Father, help me to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say. Amen. Our reading today comes from the book of Haggai and it's being read to us from someone who is part of our church family online. Um, Anne has joined us for her online worship for some time now and I hope you'll give her a very warm welcome as she reads for us. Haggai chapter 1 verses 1 to 6. On the first day of the sixth month, of the second year of the reign of King Darius of Persia, God's message was delivered by the prophet Haggai to the governor of Judah, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and to the high priest Joshua, son of Jehozazak. A message from the God of the angel armies. The people procrastinate. They say this isn't the right time to rebuild my temple, the temple of God. Shortly after that, God said more, and Haggai spoke it. How is it that it's the right time for you to live in your fine new homes, while the home, God's temple, is in ruins? And then a little later, God of the angel armies spoke out again. Take a good hard look at your life. Think it over. You have spent a lot of money, but you haven't much to show for it. You keep filling your plates, but you never get filled up. You keep drinking and drinking and drinking, but you're always thirsty. You put on layer after layer of clothes, but you can't get warm. And the people who work for you, what are they getting out of it? Not much. A leaky, rusted out bucket, that's what. That's why the God of the angel armies said, Take a good hard look at your life. Think it over.
we're almost at the point of returning to normality, aren't we? It's almost within touching distance and many of us will already have benefited from the relaxation of restrictions in this last week by travelling over our county boundaries and going and visiting family whom we've not seen for a while. Others will be waiting until this coming week when restrictions reduce yet again and we can indulge perhaps in some hospitality. And yet I wonder maybe if if we're almost rushing too much to get back to normality. We've been given a once in a lifetime opportunity to press the pause button and more than that to press the factory reset button. Now what do I mean by that? I mean that we're we're all desperate to go back to normal life but at the same time maybe now is the time just to stop and ask ourselves some pretty big questions about what normality looks like. What direction is my life going in? What what impact is my life having? What does normal look like for me? What does the future hold for my life? And I think as a church we can ask ourselves those questions as well. As a church, what exactly are we returning to? What does the new normal look like for church? What does a Sunday morning look like? What does the Tuesday coffee morning look like? What does the guild look like? The men's club look like? What does the future actually hold for us? So, my challenge is this. I would like us to spend the month of May stopping and praying for wisdom and discernment as we begin to plan the way ahead. Now, we can do that as individuals in our own lives and we can do it as a church family. And my challenge for everybody watching this is in the month of May, I want you to, to, to join me in the 10-10 challenge. So the 10, the 10 10 challenge is when we spend a few moments at 10 o'clock in the morning and a few moments at 10 o'clock at night praying for the church family that we are part of. Now, to help us through the month of May as we embark upon this, this month of prayer and discernment, we're going to turn to the book of Haggai and Zechariah in our Sunday morning services. And we're going to, to draw some lessons from these two books. So let me start off today with taking two things from the book of Haggai that might stand us in good stead as we think about our own lives and what direction they are going in in the next few weeks and as we think about our church family and what direction it's going in over the next few weeks. So let's start off with the first lesson from today and it's to do with location, location, location. They say that when you buy a house the three most important things are location, location, location. I'm surrounded by, by beauty today but when we jump into a new Bible passage or a new book from the Bible, it's important that we think about location, location, location. In other words, when was it written? Who was it written by? What's the context? What's the view like? All those kinds of things are really important. Now, I'm, I'm not going to bore you, but just, just for a couple of minutes, Haggai was written in 520 BC, 520 years before the birth of Jesus. It was written by a man called Haggai, surprise, surprise, and he is a messenger from God. And his job is to, to speak to a group of people. They are about to return to normality after not a one year pandemic, but a 50 year exile. They were carted off to a land called Babylon or a city called Babylon, and they were slaves in that foreign land. And they've been released. They're allowed to come back to their holy city, which is Jerusalem. And they are about to begin normality once again. So he's writing to them with God's message. Now we join Haggai 16 years after they have arrived back home. And God is basically presenting them with a really challenging message because he said to them that he wants them to rebuild their city. Their city is a ruin. Their holy temple, which was built by King Solomon, is a ruin. And God has asked them to rebuild their city and to rebuild their holy temple. The second thing that I think we can take from this passage is the challenge that is relevant to us. And there's a challenge jumping right out to us that's very relevant to our modern day living. It's all about priorities. You see, God is holding a mirror up to these people and he's asking them to look at themselves and ask who they really are or whose they really are. 16 years after they have returned to the holy city of Jerusalem, they have still not started rebuilding his holy temple. That was what he asked them to do and they haven't done it. And he says, these people 
have decided that the time is not right to rebuild the Holy Temple. These people, and that is really quite condescending, and it's meant to be, because elsewhere in the Bible he refers to them as my people, but now they are these people. Not because he's distanced himself from them, but because they have distanced themselves from him. He is no longer their priority. God goes on to say, you have planted much but harvested little, you eat but never have enough, you drink but never have your fill, you put on clothes but are not warm, you earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. This is all about the greed of these people. It's about their priorities being wrong. It's a little bit like the teacher who showed his class the jar and who taught them the lesson about priorities. Good afternoon everyone. We all have this one life to live, a fleeting shadow amongst all that exists in this vast universe. We have the ability to accomplish anything, truly anything, if we use our time wisely. Is this jar full? And is it full now? Yes. And how about now? Is the jar full now? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. The teacher explained to his class that the jar represented their lives. The golf balls represented the big things in life. In other words, things like faith in God, or their families, their, their health, their hopes, their dreams, their values. The stones represented the smaller things in life, but things that give life meaning like your job, your house, your hobbies, your friendships. The sand and the liquid represented the small things like watching TV, our mobile phones, our cars, our possessions, our holidays. But the teacher's lesson wasn't finished. Now, if you put the sand in the jar first, you won't have room for the pebbles or the golf balls. And the same is true in life. If you spend all your energy and your time on the small stuff, you won't have time for all the really important things that matter to you. Pay attention to the things that are critical to your happiness. Take care of the golf balls first, the really important things. Set your priorities, because everything else is God is saying all these things that you have spent time investing in, eating, drinking, um, lavishing gifts upon yourselves, none of these things are really that important. And most especially, they've forgotten about the most important thing of all, the worship of Him. So I wonder maybe if that's a lesson for us today, that as we begin to come out of restrictions, if maybe the time has come to just press the factory reset button and to think about what direction are our lives actually going and what are our priorities in life. We're lured by that, by that modern day religion of, of individualism that says to us that my life is mine and I can do what I want with it. And in actual fact, as Christians, we're called to live a very different life. We're reminded in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that our lives have been bought with a price. And the price is the death of Jesus Christ. In other words, we are adopted children of God and our lives are about serving God. So now the time has come to press the reset button and ask ourselves, what really are our priorities? And what direction will my life go in as I resume normality? So the message of Haggai, written 520 years before the birth of Jesus, is every bit as relevant 2,021 years after the birth of Jesus in Scotland today. Amen.
May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen.